Hello and welcome to Health Homeopathy and Me. I'm Raquel and today I'm going to tell you the three simple steps that you can take to match a remedy to an illness just like a homeopath would. This is, of course, the crux of homeopathy, finding that match, utilizing the law of similars, and like cures like. If you're new to homeopathy and you don't know what I'm talking about, be sure to check out my video about the law of similars. It's got some really important basic information you need to know. Okay, so this process does take a little time to learn. It takes a little effort, but it is absolutely worth it because when you find that right match, it can make a big difference in how quickly you feel better. Now, I do need to make sure that you have seen my video about safety because that talks about what sorts of things you can treat at home on your own and what sorts of things you need to see a homeopath about. So go ahead, check it out. I'll link to it in the description below and I'll wait right here for you. All right, you've seen it, we're good? Okay. so. Before I jump in, I need to remind you that everything in this video is for educational purposes only and is not intended as medical advice. If there's any doubt as to whether somebody needs professional care, be sure to err on the side of caution and contact the proper medical professional. Okay, now the exciting part, step one, we're going to take the case, which means we're going to gather all of the information that we possibly can about the situation that we're addressing. An early homeopathic physician named Dr. Boninghausen um, coined this acronym CLAMS to help us do that. So the first letter, C, stands for concomitants, and that is anything that is happening at the same time as your main complaint. So say, my biggest problem right now is I have a headache. My head hurts. That's the main complaint, but I also have a little bit of a sore throat um, and I'm really irritable and I just want to be left alone. I want to go in my room and be by myself. Both of those are going to be concomitants, something that's occurring at the same time. My sore throat and also emotional symptoms. In homeopathy, emotional symptoms are really important to pay attention to. They can really help distinguish between two remedies. Next, L, location. Where exactly is my headache? Is it on the right side, the left side? Is it behind my eyes? Is it on the vertex? Does it feel like a band all the way around my head? Be as specific as you can. Also, sore throat, right side, left side, started on the right side, moved left, down at the base of my throat, up higher. These are things we want to know. A, etiology. What happened just before this that could have caused it or left your body in a weakened state that kind of left it susceptible to illness? So did the weather change recently? Did you get stuck out in a cold wind? Were you really frustrated and angry about something or really stressed? Have you not been getting enough sleep because something is bothering you? Anything like that that could possibly have led to this um, little bit of a weakness that allowed you to get sick in the first place. M, modality. What makes you feel better and what makes you feel worse? So with my headache, do I feel better in a dark room? Do I feel better laying down or sitting up? Um, my sore throat, does it feel better when I drink something cold or when I drink something hot? Do I feel better outside in the fresh air? Do I feel better inside all bundled up? These are things that we want to know. We need to pay attention to the little details. And then S, sensation. What does it actually feel like? My headache, is it pounding and throbbing? Does it feel like it's bursting out of my skull? Does it feel like somebody is driving a nail into my head? All of these would lead you to a different remedy. My sore throat, does it feel like somebody's tickling it with a feather? Does it feel like sandpaper or like a splinter is stuck in it? Try to get some good details. Now, it is important when you are gathering somebody else's symptoms that you don't ask yes or no questions. Try not to lead their answers. We really do want their symptoms as they are experiencing it and as they are describing it in their own words. Once you've gathered all these details, it's time for step two, repertorizing. Now, in order to do this, 
you need two things. You need a repertory and a repertory chart. This is a repertory that was written a little over a um, hundred years ago by um, Dr. James Tyler Kent. He was actually an American homeopath um, and it's still relevant to homeopaths today. They can still study this in um, homeopathic school. <laughs> you can say that about a reference manual for allopathic medicine written a hundred years ago. If you tried studying that in school, you would not pass your classes. Um, but this repertory is pretty hefty and it is really far more than we need for treating acute things at home and it can be really cumbersome and really confusing um, to get through. But basically what a repertory is, is it is a list of symptoms and then under each of those symptoms is a list of the remedies that would match that symptom. Um, but we don't need this. What we need is something that was made uh, with the home prescriber in mind. Now there are a lot of um, self-help homeopathic books that were written by really wonderful homeopaths, but a lot of them um, have a limited scope because instead of using the repertorizing method that a, a classical homeopath would use, they actually list your problem, like headache, using our example from before, and then they would list a few remedies underneath it with descriptor, descriptors of each remedy. But you're kind of stuck if you don't have one of those remedies that's listed under headache because you have nowhere else to go. There's no other place you could go in the book to look for other symptoms that might fit. So they're very limited in their scope. This um, is the Complete Homeopathy Handbook by Miranda Castro. And if, as far as I know, it's the only um, homeopathic book written this way, but she actually has created a pared down repertory in here that is specifically for um, home use for uh, families. So she has three sections in this book. The first is um, history, principles, and prescribing, kind of telling you about homeopathy, what it is, its history, and um, how you would take the case, much like I'm telling you here. And then the materia medica and repertory, which is what we're going to talk about today. And then afterwards, she has some prescribing guidelines about whether or not you should try to um, treat something at home. And she also has some test cases that you can practice on, which is really helpful. And she has a repertory chart. Let me see. Ah, here it is. Okay, so this is a repertory chart, and this is the second thing that you need for this part. And I'm trying to keep it so that you can see. These are all of the remedies in her book. There's 95 remedies in her book and these are the ones she's included on her chart. And then this is where you would write the symptoms. Now you kind of have to treat this as one long line because none of these are duplicate um, remedies. So if you wrote a symptom up here, like say my headache was throbbing and so you put throbbing up here on one, you're also going to want to put throbbing here on one um, because none of these uh, remedies are duplicated. And then you would go to the repertory. I have the page marked here. To the headache section. And then you would scroll down until you found pains. Let's see, we said throbbing. Here we go, throbbing. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 remedies that can have throbbing headache as a symptom. And you would go through your repertory chart and you would tick off each remedy that had that symptom. And you're gonna continue through all of the symptoms that you had with your clams, writing them into the repertory chart and ticking them off, finding them in the repertory and ticking them off. A good tip to use, especially when you're beginning, is if you have a headache, start at the very top of the headache section and go down and read each of the symptoms and see if any of them apply to you. Because sometimes you don't know quite what you're looking at or what you're supposed to be finding yet. 
um, or how it's written in the repertory. So if you go through, you can say, oh, that one, that fits me. I'll tick those off. And you can go through your chart that way too. Um, and then once you have all of your remedies ticked off and all of your symptoms are covered in the clams, uh, from your clams, are covered in the um, repertory chart, it's time for step three. However, you do want to make sure that you do um, the repertory chart, include all the symptoms from all of your concomitants, remember the beginning of the clams. So I wouldn't just do my headache symptoms, I would also add in my sore throat symptoms and my emotional symptoms. Um, but now it's time for step three, oh, I'm still in this book, um, which is where you would look it up in the Materia Medica. So you're gonna kind of go through and tally up all of those check marks and see which ones come out as the top three or so remedies. You don't just wanna pick the first remedy that has the most ticks. That doesn't always mean it's the closest match. Sometimes one that has fewer ticks on the repertory chart when you read about it in the Materia Medica, actually seems like a closer match. Um, here we are again. We have a standard Materia Medica. This one covers 195 remedies. It has no other sections in the book. It is just Materia Medica, and that is a pretty hefty book um, and really unnecessary for acute treatment at home, and, and it kind of contains a lot more information that really kind of overwhelms when you're new to things. Um, but Miranda has done a beautiful job uh, paring down the Materia Medica and I'm going to go to Belladonna just to show you some things. Belladonna is a very common throbbing headache remedy so that's why I've chosen that one. Here we go. And she has a couple of sections. So first is the title and it tells you um, the family name, other common names for the herb. Um, in homeopathy, we use the Latin names because we have to be very specific because different um, things that would have the same common name might actually have different symptoms. Um, and then a little bit about belladonna, the plant. And then we get into the part that we're after. These are the general symptoms. So things that are really common that you would see from somebody who needs belladonna. Complaints from a cold, dry wind, getting the head wet, eyes are shining, the face is red, um, pains appear suddenly and disappear suddenly, throbbing is a big one with belladonna, um, better for lying down. These are just general things that are going to be really commonly seen when somebody needs belladonna. And then there's emotional and mental symptoms. Angry, anxious, confused, delirious, excitable. Um, expression is fierce. Restless, screaming with pain, sensitive to light and to noise, and tearful during a fever. So these are kind of things that as you're reading through and you're thinking, oh, those actually might fit this person. Um, and then she has a section on physical complaints where you scroll through um, and it has a lot of different uh, problems that Belladonna could actually address, like bedwetting, breastfeeding problems, chicken pox, the common cold, convulsions, um, which would typically be like a febrile convulsion, cough, earache, eye inflammation, fever, and what we're after here is the headache. And actually the list goes on. Belladonna is quite a broad remedy um, and covers quite a lot. But So here we are with headache. And a belladonna headache would have symptoms where the pains are in the back of the head, in the eyes and forehead, in the temples, bursting, hammering, pulsating, throbbing, violent, and start and stop suddenly. Um, it's better for resting the head, for lying in a darkened room, and for pressure. Um, and it goes through what it's worse for and some of the causes of what could cause, you know, the etiology part what was happening right before, what could cause it, like a cold air or getting your head wet. Um, and so you would go through and you take your top three or four remedies from your um, repertory chart, the ones that had the most ticks on that, and you would look each of those up in the Materia Medica, and you'll read about the remedy, the general symptoms, the emotional symptoms, and then the specific symptoms 
to the physical complaint. And from there, you have to pick one. Which one sounds most like you or the problem that you are trying to find a remedy for? And, um, and sometimes it's easy and it's like, oh, that is it right there. And sometimes you can get a little stuck, like it's hard. There might be one that has a lot of one thing and one that has a lot of another thing and you're just not quite sure. And the wonderful thing about homeopathy is if you aren't quite sure, it is okay to try a remedy. You're gonna try one dry dose and one wet dose. And if there has been no change and the remedy doesn't seem to have helped, you can move on to the next remedy in your repertory and see maybe that one will fit better. Um, there's no harm in trying a couple of different remedies uh, as long as, you know, give it enough time to see if the remedy's gonna work, give it a good chance, but there's no harm that could be done. We're not worried about any sort of toxicity or overdosing. Um, so, there you have it. Those are the steps. Um, it's, o it's okay to go with your gut if, um, if you're really having a hard time choosing between a remedy. But the more that you do this, the, the easier it will be to pick because you're going to notice like, oh, those are definitely... Um, belladonna symptoms. It's red, hot, swollen, throbbing. That sounds a lot like belladonna and it's going to come, start to come more quickly and become more like second nature. But you do have to dig into it. You do need to practice, right? These, this, you want to make sure that you're familiar with the book, familiar with the process and your repertory chart before you're in the middle of a situation where you know somebody is sick or you're sick it's so hard to sit there and match a remedy when you're the one who's sick and you don't feel good um, so you want it to be something that you know how to do and you don't have to figure out how to do it in the moment um, when you need it so those practice um, practice cases in the back really helpful highly recommend doing those um, and okay so that's all I have for you today. If you liked this video, be sure and give me a thumbs up below to let me know. My next video, I'm going to talk about dosing. What is a dose? What is a dry dose and a wet dose? And how do I give it? What's the easiest way to give it to a baby or a child? Um, and I'll also talk a little bit about um, antidoting and what that is and do you need to be concerned about it? So. In order not to miss anything, if you haven't done it already, be sure to click that subscribe button followed by the alert button so that you won't miss a thing. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, be sure to let me know in the comments. I really look forward to hearing from you. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.